Hi, my name is Emily. I'm a faithful follower of Christ and I'm finally scrubbing this brand new bathroom of ours that's been newly renovated. We don't have that fan yet, but we don't care. Greg and I are going to start showering in our new bathtub that's attached to our bedroom. How nice is that? Instead of sharing all these bathrooms with all these kids, in fact, two unexpected kiddos that we've just added to the family. So that's where I am. That's what I'm doing. I'm pausing right now to make this video that I feel Holy Spirit led to make. And there's one of you out there I've been texting with. I won't name names, but I... I will not name names, but I will say... You birthed me. Whoever you are, that's all I'll say. Put your morning where your mouth is. Let me encourage you to do that. Put your morning where your mouth is. Have you heard the phrase, put your money where your mouth is? All right, you really believe what you're saying? Well, back it up with your money. Money is a resource, a finite resource, actually. Everything here on earth is our time, our money, our energy. These are resources that we get to allocate and spend how we choose. So people say, put your money where your mouth is. If you are a Christian, and look, this is kind of for those of you that aren't Christians, maybe just kind of curious, please, by all means, put your money, put your morning, put your morning where your curiosity is. On Sunday morning, and I'm just gonna go ahead and challenge all of us this Sunday morning, get your butt into a pew. I'll do the same thing. Look, with this many kids and this many acres and that many cows, I could show you some of them. There's a few. Greg and I often feel like we have not an excuse, but a reason to skip church because we just have so much going on. In fact, for a while, I was taking these two new little boys, getting them all dressed up, ready for church, polished right up in their little church clothes, looking so stinking cute. And I would take them to their mom so that she could get them to church. Well, by the time I did that, I had a hard time getting me and the other six to church. We don't do that anymore. Now, we've made a new rule. Wherever you sleep on Saturday night is where you're gonna wake up and go to church. So Greg and I cannot use that as a reason anymore it would be a big fat excuse. Let's don't have excuses. Let's don't excuse ourselves out of the opportunity to worship the Lord in a corporate communal setting. Today is September the 20th. Today is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 21, 22, 23, 24, 20, 25. Yes, 25. <sighs> I'm challenging you. If you want to accept the challenge, I don't know. Don't don't rebel against me. If you're rebelling, well, it's our human nature to rebel against God. I'm going to challenge myself. And if you want, join me in my challenge to make sure. Now notice, if you really commit to this, the enemy will likely spring on you 50 different scenarios why this just won't work out. Be steadfast, persevere, be determined. Sunday, September 25th, I'm gonna have my butt in a Bible-believing Christian church. Okay, I'm not gonna go into details, but I'd rather you pick grass in a field then go, here lies coming from anti-Christ, anti-Christian churches. And there's lots of them. And yes, there is one way to heaven, and his name is Jesus Christ. And this is not the same Jesus that a lot of other people talk about. So you need to get, him, get to know him personally. Mary painted my nails. Get to know Jesus personally, on your own directly read the bible matthew mark luke and john uh the new testament starts with 
Matthew. Matthew and Mark and Luke and John each gave their own account of Christ. From there starts the new church because Christ had already uh, gone to heaven. This is where we start learning about the Holy Spirit, which just absolutely continues to blow my mind. Galatians is one of the, my favorite, all-time favorite books of the Bible. Um, Galatians 2.20, this is a letter that Paul wrote saying, It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. This is also where we get the fruit. Look at my highlighting. That's before I learned how to highlight. I'm just kidding. Mary did that. Okay, this is also where we get the fruit of the Spirit. Now, hear that, the fruit of the Spirit, not the fruit of Emily, not the fruit of you. It's not the fruit of me. I used to accidentally tell kids, is there a fruit of the Spirit you need to work on? Okay, that is so wrong. Um, the fruit of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If you're wanting to memorize those, let me give you a little hint. They come in... Um, in little three little groups of three. There's nine total. The first three have one syllable, love, joy, peace. The second three have two syllables, patience, kindness, goodness. The third three have three syllables, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And obviously that little trick only works if you are using the uh, NIV, the New International Version. Because some people call patience forbearance. So if you're using the New International Version, you can use that little trick. But listen, get to know Jesus so that when you hear other religions, not relationships, religions, talk about Jesus. Okay, I know a whole bunch of people named Susie. No, I don't. I One. I know a bunch of people named Brad. I know several Marys. There are lots of people named Jesus, but there is only one Jesus Christ, Son of God. And trust me, there are religions that are teaching a false Jesus. Put your morning where your mouth is. My dear friend, Audrey. Hey, girl. She was saying, she wrote me this awesome card. I just loved it. And she said, thanks for being his hands and feet. In the body of Christ, which is talked about in the book of 1 Corinthians, I believe it's 12, 27. But you are the body of Christ. Each one of you is a part of it. The body of Christ is just that. It's a body with members. We're his hands, we're his feet, we're his pupils, we're his lips, we're his adenoids. <laughs> we are his skin and fingernails and muscles and tissue and lungs. A friend of mine is a physical therapist, Nikki. Nikki, I'm going to send this to you. I'm going to send this to you. Um, Nikki is a, oh, mom, there you are. I told my mom to call me so I could get something off my chest that the Holy Spirit wants me to tell her. Mom, I'll call you right back. Um, a friend of mine is a physical therapist. And she said there are times she feels the spirit flowing through her. I said, without a doubt, without a doubt, because he dwells within you. And she said, for me, she said, for you, Emily, it's like it's verbal. Amen to that, because we've all been given different gifts. She is gifted physically, and I mean a spiritual gift. I told her, I said, girl, you are the muscles of this body. I might be the voice of or a voice. And by the way, we have all been given gifts and at times we're lent a gift. We might get a gift for the day to use it to build the kingdom. So there's not one of us that can do one thing, but all of us must come together for the body to operate, for it to succeed, for it to function. Let me encourage you. Put your Sunday morning where your mouth is. And this Sunday morning, go worship the Lord with your brothers and sisters in Christ, in fellowship with your fellow body members. We need each other now more than ever and this world needs light now more than ever. I feel like I can say that. 
the dark is getting darker. Thank God for Jesus, the light of the world, John 8, 12. That's it. Put your morning where your mouth is, and I challenge you, Emily, to get to church. I already have an outfit picked out. I'm going to wear jeans, a white t-shirt, cowboy boots, and this, like, thing that is thin that some of my kids were like, is that a bathrobe? And I was like, no. And Mary said, you kind of look Chinese. I said, thank you. We shall see. It kind of looks like a very thin, lightweight kimono, but it's not. It is um, kind of like you see these that come down to like your waist. This one just goes all the way to the floor. I don't know. I'm going to try it out. Get your outfit picked out. Matthew 6, 25, the Lord says, do not worry about what you eat or what you will wear. He talks a lot about not worrying. And one way to not worry about it is to go ahead and figure it out. Jump every hurdle you can so that Sunday morning you're good to go. Therefore, make disciples. You're good to go to church. Matthew 28, 18 through 20, go therefore and make disciples. And we need to do this as a team. Who's with me? Jesus on three. One, two, three. Jesus. I love you dearly. We'll talk again soon. Bye.